This video was brought to you by Bedroom Planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, and Stolenberg. Yo, what's up? Today I want to talk about wind and how it affects the consumption, but also about a better root planner. You see, a better root planner is, well, you guys probably know it, it's a root planner, but they have many cars connected to the system. For example, Tesla, you can natively get it in there and then it will report live data to a better root planner. So you don't have to say how many percent you have, and then it will be easier for the system to know exactly how many percent you need to charge to to get to the next charger or whatever uh, but also other systems like uh, yeah i don't remember there are also other cars can also connect and report live data to a better root planner and that means that the better root planner will easily uh, predict how much each car will use by looking at aggregated data but they also been looking at um, win it was interesting um, they made a blog post about win and how it affects consumption on the model 3 they could also do this with other cars but um, you see here um, well that would be interesting so right now it has 1700 and let me reload here 1700 views let's see how many views it get after this video <laughs> well okay so so we have a little diagram here you can read about this i'm not going to read all everything here you can just read it yourself but uh let's see uh, here 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 um so to to show you what's going on here so they they check check the data for model 3 and you see that the car's direction is traveling this direction and if you have wind blowing against you you will have the red here which is negative impact so increased consumption you know we all know that right uh, and then the other way here if it get tailwind you get then uh, decreased consumption but what i did know is that side wind also negatively in, uh, affects the consumption so um uh i can show you uh they have uh, yeah here, here so if you scroll down you see that um here they say that nice tailwind will then uh, improve the consumption by 6%, but then headwind 10 meter per second is 19% uh, increase in consumption. So, uh, which means that uh, in a very windy day, 10 meter per second is quite windy. Normally when I do my range test, I will usually have somewhere between, uh, well, two, three meter per second is low, but uh, maybe five, five to seven meter per second on the windy days. But you see that uh, if you take 19 minus six, you will then have 13%. So in a windy day, you get maybe 10, 13% higher consumption. And this could uh, explain why some days I get higher consumption than others. <laughs> Whereas, okay, I mean, I go from A back to I mean, a from point a to b and then back again to try to mitigate this you can obviously see that if you are traveling one direction only and you have lots of head uh, tailwinds are you will then have pretty nice consumption 19 percent you know best case right so at least by going back to the starting point you will then reduce it but um, i think well i don't know the numbers but i i would assume that for my test uh, I might have as much as uh, let's say uh, five to ten percent uh, variation because of wind versus a, a day without wind. But what I didn't know is that uh, crosswind will also increase the consumption, uh, but not as much. You see, uh, it's just half of the he right headwind. I mean, head-on headwind. But um, it does affect it negatively. You can see it here in the diagram again that. Um, if you get side wind, you will have high consumption. Uh, I heard, you know, in 2018 when uh, Nissan, they introduced a new leaf, they claim that the leaf has been designed to be able to utilize the t side wind. So I was never able to test it somehow. Maybe I can ask about the roof planner, but they'll be watching this video anyway. You guys, if uh, about the roof planner people have information, maybe you can dig into this and see if the leaf, in fact, improves the consumption. So in that case, uh, let me see. So zero is wait. Uh, zero is there. So it's the the light blue teal color. Uh, if they utilize it, it should be it should have some kind of. Uh, no, no. It should be blue. Yeah, it should be minus. Yeah. So it should have a deeper blue here. Something like that. Yeah. And even yeah, yeah. Something like that. Let's see. <laughs> uh, but okay. Anyway, so. What this actually means is that uh, you have higher consumption on windy days. So, um, and why is it that it doesn't become zero, by the way? Well, let's say if you're traveling at 
at um, at 120 kilometers per hour. Yeah, let's do the 120. I, I, I actually know it, but I haven't really dig, dig into the data, but I know that at higher speed, you will be more affected by the wind. So if you're traveling at 120, 120 kilometers per hour and you have, um, you have, let's say, headwind, it will basically be this one plus this. So it's it's almost like traveling at 156 kilometers per hour. And then the, uh, the, the you know, the, the drag is then squared of this one again. And that's, made, that, that's why the consumption is so high when you go d dead on headwind. And then on the other way around though, if you have 120 minus 36, kilo, 36 you will it, it will be as traveling at 84 kilometers per hour only so you see that the gain is not that big then uh, when you have the tailwind uh, yeah and that's that's roughly why i mean you guys probably know that you can read more about this so this makes sense but the tailwind i mean it's like the side wind though huh i didn't know about that one so um uh, what did they write more? Okay, no, uh, we didn't really have a but yeah, so, but so it means that, you know, I have one test I did with, um, with the e-tron, the fat e-tron, the e-tron 55. I remember it was on a windy day, but it, I think we had, um, I don't remember, maybe some, some crosswind, but also some head or tailwind. And I remember on that test, the consumption was high for some reason. And I didn't really know why, because it wasn't that cold, but maybe wind was the problem. And because fat e-tron has poor aerodynamics, it's inefficient. So then it is then more affected by wind than other cars. So maybe I should retest the fat e-tron. Maybe it is not that, that, that thirsty as it is. But on the other hand, wind is then... Wind is a natural phenomenon that you can't avoid. <laughs> it depends where you live. So you can't just eliminate and say that, well, we have to assume uh, windless days. Well, do we? Uh, so, um, I don't know, I, I found this interesting. And also it's pretty cool that um, I bet the Ruplana, they, uh, they can gather data and they can then learn more about how stuff uh, affects the consumption and then uh, better, better predict um, the, the, the travel, what you need and all that. But um, pretty cool. What do you guys think, huh? Um, and you know, I, I can, I actually, I'm so uh, fortunate that I can talk directly to um, Abedru Planner guys, uh, Bo and also Turbjörn, the two, two guys I've talked to, really nice people, and they always listen to uh, input. So if uh, we have something we don't like or we find bugs, uh, I can always get feedback to them. Uh, there was one, I remember one day I called Turbjörn, he said himself that, I can call him. He said, Tesla Bjorn, you can call me any day, any time. I was like, are you sure about that? <laughs> He's like, yes. So I did call him on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> while we had a live stream. And I had an idea that, you know, uh, I was driving, I think I was, I, want, I wasn't sure which car I was driving, a Tesla or something. But um, I realized that when you use a Tesla, uh, okay, okay, so a better planet will, will uh, will uh, assume the best case for charging which is not always the case because what i notice is that uh, when you are uh, the better world one it seems to be a little bit optimistic so let me explain um it assumes that you will receive 140 or something kilowatt on the v2 supercharger but the problem with the model 3 for example is that many times when you plug it in it will if you have especially if you have dual motor it will suck around seven kilowatt for preheating the battery i call them the afterburner so you're not receiving 140 145 kilowatt you're only receiving 130 kilowatt for a little while depends how cold the battery is and then it will stop it so it means that actually every charging stop is in practical case maybe one two three minutes slower than a bit of it claims and i i, I told him about i i called turbjorn on the sunday and then he called boo and then i talked to boo and turbjorn and they were like oh cool yeah you know they haven't thought about that hmm and then they could maybe find a way to to correct it in a better root planet so it so you get a better uh, estimation so but again it's kind of a hard case to figure out how to do it because they have some statistical data they can use but then they don't know for every case how hot it is and so on because they don't know battery temperature uh, and so on so and when you are planning a trip they can't predict how hot the battery will be 
when you start in the morning. You could be parked outside or you could be parked in a hot garage, you know, but at least we had a nice conversation and they always listen to input and they all always want to improve. And wind is interesting. We could maybe look at other cases also, like how does how does rain affect it or what about temperature? That would also be interesting, yes. What do you guys think, huh? Maybe we should have some similar, uh, some kind of cool uh, diagram about how weather, uh, how rain and how temperature. Well, rain can be a little bit tricky though because uh, when when you look at the weather forecast and you see that it's going to be raining, well, uh, I know that if it hasn't rained before, um, how do I put this? Rain, how rain affects consumption depends very much on the last. 10 hours what happened roughly or five hours or something because if it just starts raining the consumption will not go up if the road is already dry but if it had been raining for a while then the road is soaked and then you have higher uh, actually I don't think you have higher consumption I mean I don't you don't have higher uh, resist you don't have higher rolling resistance but you have higher consumption because you have water that needs to be pushed so you have higher uh, uh, resistance, right? Uh, something. Um, but uh, you see, if it has been raining a lot, but then it stops, especially in winter, and then it stops raining, but then for several hours after it stops raining, the road will still be wet, and then the weather route planner might then assume that okay, it it hasn't, it's not raining, so then it means that you have good consumption well you don't <laughs> but when it comes to temperature temperature is easier because it just changes right and then uh, maybe the car can report it or you can just look at the weather weather data uh, historical weather data and you can see how how cold or hot the, the, the it was outside but then i guess that also depends on the car what kind of temperature is set inside and all that but okay it's very complicated but i find it interesting so um I guess this is the this is the opportunity for you guys to maybe ask a better planner because I think they'll be reading the comments and taking notes if there's anything. So I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.